Section 1D, Skill. It's important that you can describe and explain how different types of feedback in practice or competition improves performance. Intrinsic feedback is feedback that comes from inside the body. It mainly comes from muscles which tell the performer whether they've hit a sweet shot. It tells them whether they're balanced and they get information from the, the muscles that goes to the brain to tell them what's happening in their performance. Extrinsic feedback comes from an outside source, like a coach telling a player they've done the right or the wrong technique in their skill. Knowledge of results is information about the performance after it's finished, like seeing whether the ball has hit the back of the net. Knowledge of performance is more detailed information given by a coach that explains technique and helps the performer to understand whether they produce the right technique or not in their chosen skill. Sometimes all elements of feedback are given at the same time and sometimes each individual bit happens totally separately. Sometimes some feedback is missed out and the performer doesn't know whether they've done the skill right or wrong. When this happens very little learning can take place. Open and closed skills. An open skill is one which needs constant reference to the environment and one where the movement pattern may change each time. The best example for this is using an invasion game such as football or hockey or basketball and talking about the performer receiving a pass. He has to watch the flight of the ball, be aware of performers around him, he needs to make sure he's in the right position and may need to communicate as well. Because he has to place so much emphasis on the environment, this makes the skill open. Almost think of it as the mind being open to everything around it. This allows them to produce a good skill performance. A closed skill is one where there's a set pattern of movements and the performer may only need to make a very initial reference to the environment and sometimes no reference to the environment at all. A good example of a closed skill is the shot put, where once the athlete has turned round and had a look what's there, he gets himself into position and produces the same technique time and time again. He doesn't have to respond to anything happening around him, just focuses on producing power and the correct technique. Some sports have both open and closed skills happening at different times. In tennis, for instance, a service is a fairly closed skill, whereby the performer, once he's had a look at his opponent, throws the ball up in the air and produces that set technique of his tennis serve and hits the tennis ball where he wants to hit it, not really paying too much attention to his opponent. Once the opponent returns the serve, the performer has to perform an open skill, whereby he responds to the flight of the ball and the speed of the ball, he judges his position on court and his opponent's position on court, and then produces the forehand top spin down the line. A good way to remember whether it's a closed skill or not, is if you could perform that skill fairly successfully with your eyes closed, it could be a closed skill. If you'd have absolutely no chance at performing that skill with your eyes closed, for instance, catching a cricket ball, it's very likely an open skill. Another way of remembering is if the environment doesn't change during the performance of the skill, then it's a closed skill. For instance, in a gymnastic vault, as the gymnast is running up, nothing moves around and a top level gymnast could probably do it with their eyes closed. In a football match everything is changing all of the time especially when you're looking to receive a pass from a teammate 
As a result, this skill is very open. However, if a goalkeeper is taking a goal kick, he concentrates on the ball and his body position and doesn't worry too much about what's happening up the field. So this skill is more closed than when he's receiving a shot from the opponent's striker. There are a number of basic abilities that form the foundation of all skills. Things such as speed, agility, coordination, flexibility, balance and reaction time can be seen across a whole range of skills. Try and identify a number of skills which involve different elements of ability. Think of ones that just include speed, agility and flexibility. Try and identify a sport that includes coordination and balance or one that is predominantly focused on reaction time. If you can give a good practical example where abilities make a difference in the skill production, you can get the marks. If you were to watch two different performers, how would you identify who is the most skillful? What makes up skill? The four factors that you need to be able to explain are consistency. That means doing the same thing each time and being able to consistently produce good results. Number two is energy. A good performer or a skillful performer should be able to produce performance without trying that hard. So Thierry Henry, when he's running with the ball, looks effortless. A good performer who's skillful shouldn't take too much time to produce difficult movements. They should also be adaptable to different circumstances and environments that they find themselves in during the performance. These four factors, consistency, energy, time and adaptability, should allow you to make a decision on who is the most skillful performer, regardless of the sport that they're involved in. So how do we learn skills? Well, there are a number of main ways. It might be that you practice your skill and you keep working on the technique until it becomes right. To help you, it might be that you copy someone else. This could be copying a coach. It could be copying an older student in the school. It could be copying somebody that you watch or see on TV. These people are called role models. They're people, sometimes called idols as well, that we try and follow and learn from. We may want to be like them, so we copy the things that they do. Another way of learning these skills is through something called trial and error. This means that we have a go, we fail, and we learn from our mistakes. The more goes we have, the less mistakes we make, and eventually the skill becomes perfected. So try to remember the way that we learn skills is through practice, copying, trial and error, and role models. When we perform any skill, we go through what's called an information processing model. All the things in our surroundings or environment provide us with what's called an input. This is the information going into our brain. The second stage is we make a decision on what that information is and what it means. The third stage, we produce an output. We send the decision to our muscles and they act on it. Once we have completed the skill, we get feedback, which we discussed earlier, either internally or externally, about what happened when we produced the skill. This feedback gives us more input or information for the next time we produce that skill. The information processing model allows us to evaluate better, it allows us to analyse what we've done right and what we've done wrong, and plan for improvement in performance in our physical activities.